We as men have changed tremendously over the ages, but what has not changed about us is our continued efforts and pursuit to gain the affections of women. I have heard it said that men respond to what they see and women respond to what they hear. As a result, women wear makeup and men lie. I wonder though, what this has made us as men. My question today, do men need to stop lying? Before I get started, and to put this squarely on the table, because I can't even make this video without actually making this known. In terms of who lies more, or even who lies bigger, if I had to choose, I would say women. For me, undoubtedly. And we can go back and forth on the reasons for that in another segment. This segment today is about men and our lies. Women respond to what they want to hear. It feels good to hear the things you want to hear, and women are emotion-centric creatures. This isn't a slight at women or a suggestion that they should be some other type of way. I put this out because for this reason, men will lie to get what we need or want from women. The truth is the truth, but it doesn't often feel as good to face it, know it, or have it given to you. For that reason, we lie. More than the lies that we tell women to either avoid their disapproval or to gain it, the lies that we have been living and telling ourselves are the bigger issue here. We have been lying to ourselves about what we want, and it has become the order of the day for men to suppress their desires, motivations, and intentions in lieu of a lie. Many times, and unfortunately, if this is left untended to, it results in some form of a violent outburst. That, although likely unintentional, does damage all the same, whether it be to women and children, other men, or even ourselves. As the numbers show, women most certainly attempt suicide much more than men do. However, with the general trend of us being better than women at things, we succeed at suicide far more often. Suicide isn't a desire for death. There is nothing that lives that desires not to live, regardless of how fashionable it may seem to say things like that. Rather, suicide is a desire for life, life that is perceived as wholly unattainable, so much so that the burden of living without it is too great to bear. They haven't given up on life but given up on the possibility of a life they can be satisfied with themselves in. All the same, we need to curb this trend and give men the tools to make for themselves lives they can realistically desire to exist in. As far as masculine medicine is concerned, I have three principles, each with a practice and a theory side to it. The theory side of the third principle is that this is your life. That is what's at stake. This isn't an attempt to shame men who will commit suicide. Frankly, I don't think the shame would have any effect. They're already dead. This is a call to action for the men who remain to refuse to live a lie. Your life is for you to live and no one else. This is your life. You are the only person ever obligated to provide fulfillment and happiness in your life for your life. Not a woman, not children, not your family, not some society, spooky spirit, or some other super ego. You. If you want those things in the life you live, they are your responsibility to attain. I don't care what anyone deserves, more especially not you or me. We bring ourselves to the point we are at, and by that same respect, we bring ourselves out. As a thing is bound, so it is unbound. You always have a choice. The first step to this isn't seeking anything out there in the world. The first step is being honest with yourself about yourself. Honesty about what you want and why you want that. 
and not settling for just how you feel. Honesty about why you have done and continue to do the things that you do in your life, regardless of whether or not you like the feeling about the answers that you find. You have to strive for the honesty in order to find the answers. The path to finding out what you want and how to actually get that is to be honest with yourself about why you want any of that in the first place. This honesty will not simply help you in getting out of your own way in your pursuit of attaining the life that you wish to live and then living it. The greater benefit you receive in this dedication to honesty is its utility it provides you in maintaining your position. Let me explain. The practice side to that third principle that I mentioned earlier is this. Be righteously honest. In my experience, quite often, women are told to do what is right for them. Men, in that same breath, are told to do the right thing. Your life is for you to live and no one else. What that right thing is, is what's right for you. This is the premises that you need to be moving from. Author Rolo Tomasi calls this being your own mental point of origin. If this seems selfish, that's because it is. Not only is this your life and you have to live it, but that position will most certainly be challenged in many ways. If the general burden of performance wasn't enough, the challenge to what you say is right for you and the rest of the world insisting on rejecting that is an unrelenting challenge indeed. What will keep you on track? Being righteously honest. To be righteous is to be without guilt and motivated according to that which is right. If you know what is right for you and you are your own mental point of origin, and on top of that, you have been honest as you can with your conclusions, you can be righteous about the position you take and the moves that you make. When challenged, you can be passionate about the defense of your square without needing to be fearful or fall into emotional instability and recklessness. You can navigate your emotions, as confusing as they may be sometimes, based upon principles for your life that you know are designed for the outcomes you want to attain. This is your life. Be righteously honest, and your steps will be as sure and steady as your footing. If you can get your head and your heart wrapped around this idea, you will then have the tools and supplies to not only begin building the skeleton of, but to flesh out your own personal philosophy for the life that you are living. The first step is not simply to ask yourself the questions, but to answer them honestly, regardless of how you feel about what will come up. You need to see the truth and you need it from you. I'll leave you with this and I'll say it behooves you to think about it. A question without an answer is a statement and a statement doesn't warrant an answer.